Hi, I'm Coach Brian from the National Free Flight Society, and this is a helicopter, Science Olympiad helicopter event, basic introduction. Um, National Free Flight Society is the Science Olympiad national event sponsor, if, for those of you that heard, haven't heard of the group. Um, this basic introduction is going to talk about types of helicopters, um, how they fly, and keys to success in the event. So basic um, helicopter flight um, is just straight up and straight down. So the helicopter doesn't look like a full-scale helicopter. It's often just a stick with a rotor on the top and the rotor on the bottom. This is called a coaxial helicopter. And when they fly, they go straight up, they rest on the ceiling, and they spin there for a bunch of time, and then they come back down gradually, usually. Um, there are a few other types of helicopters, but that's the basic flight path of a helicopter. Um, things that are different from in with helicopters compared to airplanes are you're usually you're going to wind the rubber band very aggressively, and usually use almost no back off turns. So you'll be launching, uh, winding and launching at relatively high torque. And the way the rules are set up this year, the helicopter rotors could be fairly large, which means thicker rubber bands, which means pretty high torque rubber bands. Um, types of helicopters, I already mentioned, this is a coaxial helicopter, meaning two rotors top and bottom moving in opposite directions, spinning in opposite directions. This is also what they call an X rotor. So you can see the top and bottom spar of the helicopter rotor looks like an X. And it's really basic looking. It actually flies really well. Also, this helicopter has an axle on the top rotor, so the top rotor spins freely, and it has no axle on the bottom rotor. The bottom rotor is mounted directly to the stick. So you can see that puts the two rotors in a slightly different axis, but it actually flies completely fine. Um, this is a coaxial helicopter, um, basically an X rotor, except that the trailing edge of the rotor is two pieces so that the rotor can, blade can be tapered towards the tip. This is a Freedom Flight kit um, from a previous year, 2017, and also in Michigan, 2021. This is a prototype um, that fits the current year rules to fit in the, current, the box, and you can see the rotors are a little bigger. It's also an X rotor. Something a little different about this one is this is the top of the helicopter, and the top rotor is fixed to the motor stick, and the bottom rotor is on an axle spinning freely. So the other two helicopters had the free spinning rotor on the top and the fixed rotor on the bottom. The free spinning rotor on the bottom is a little bit harder to launch because you have to hold the rotor and you have to release the fuselage to get the top rotor to spin, and then you have to let go of the rotor. That's the sequence. Top rotor spins first, bottom rotor you let go of second. So it's a little trickier to launch. Um, the X, the helical, um, or the coax helicopter with the top rotor on an axle, you actually have the tail of the fuselage to hang on to. So once the, you let go of the top rotor, it starts spinning, you just let go of the bottom of the fuselage and then it shoots to the ceiling. So it maybe is a little weaker because you're hitting the ceiling hard sometimes with this axle area, um, but it's easier to launch because you're holding on to just a little tab onto the fuselage. That's the last thing you let go of. Um, so once again, with the free spinning rotor with an axle on it on the bottom, you have to hang on to the rotor while you're releasing it. Um, and um, the top rotor is fixed to the fuselage. Another type of helicopter is the Chinook helicopter. This is a helicopter that was from the 2018 Science Olympiad rules uh, that allowed 30 centimeter rotor diameter and three uh, gram total weight. So it was actually quite light. You can see it has two rotors that would require two motors and kind of a box kite configuration for the top stabilizer. Um, relatively challenging to fly because you have to wind one motor, clip it or stabilize it somehow, and then wind the other motor. 
and then you have to release both rotors at the same time. Um, uh, it's probably not going to be a competitive advantage to build the um, Chinook helicopter because the box is not very tall, which means the motor sticks can't be very long. And you'll see other helicopters um, have more than, you can have uh, rotors with more than two blades. This is a four blade top, three blade bottom. Um, whether or not that's beneficial, it would be up to the students uh, and teams to test, build it and test it. Um, the two bladed rotor is very competitive and actually will fit in the box um, diagonally pretty well to give you a nice long rotor. So that's basic design of helicopters and basic blade configurations. There's one other type of helicopter besides the X rotor that I don't have an example of, and it's a paddle blade where the blades look like the blades of a propeller. And it, that does have a slight benefit um, in that you probably can change the pitch angle, this angle, of the blade. You can alter that if the um, hub between the two blades is created so that you can do that. So you can loosen that or detach it, change these angles, and then reattach it or re-glue it. Um, this X rotor, you really can't alter the pitch angle once it's built. Um, other than that, uh, the disadvantage to the uh, paddle bladed rotor is that it requires a movable pivoting, free pivoting vane um, at the top of the helicopter to stabilize it. So the JNH Aerospace uh, helicopter is a paddle bladed, I'm calling it a paddle bladed rotor helicopter. Um, keys to success in the event are to build to minimum weight, number one. Absolutely build to minimum weight. Um, at number two is winding technique. So there is a, another video uh, created by the National Preflight Society that demonstrates winding and launching the helicopter, and you'll want to watch that. Aggressive winding, getting maximum torque into the rubber band, maximum turns, will give you a longer flight. Um, other key to success would be matching the rubber to the rotor in the helicopter. So matching the rubber means matching the um, length and the weight of the rubber band. And you can think of it as thickness, like some rubber is sold as 1 8 inch wide, some is sold as 3 32nd inch wide. But really what you want to think about is average linear density, because rubber band is squishy and you can't really measure exactly how wide it is. If you try to, you squish it. But you can do something pretty basic and that's to measure the length of the rubber band before you tie it into a motor. And I'm shooting for a um, 15 inch, and I made notes here, uh, 16 inch motor, sorry. So that would be a 16 inch loop. So this is what I'm calling a 16 inch motor, the loop, the measurement after the motor's created into a loop. So to make a 16-inch uh, motor, I'm cutting a 33-inch piece of rubber, and that would give me 32 inches uh, for the two 16-inch strands, a half of an inch that will be in the knot, and then if you're pulling the knot tight with a couple of little extra ends, there, you may have little ends of a quarter inch each on the uh, two strands to cut off. So this 33-inch piece I cut off and weighed, and it weighed uh, from a box of 1 8 inch rubber. So I cut this from a box of 1 8 inch rubber and it weighed 2.554 grams. So if you take the 2.544 grams and divide it by 33, you find that this piece of rubber strip has an average linear density of 0 0.0774 grams per inch. The very next piece that I cut off, same box of rubber, weighed 2.667 grams. So its average linear density is 0 0.80808 grams per inch. So what I was shooting for for my testing was something around 0 0.081, so I would want to use this motor. So to find a variety of average linear density motors to test, you would just cut more and more and more sections of rubber and weigh them and sort them into various uh, average linear density piles. And that's how you would do your testing. Um, 
picking a length to test um, is described in another one of the documents uh, created by National Free Plate Society. So look on the website for those. There is a basic um, helicopter building document, and there's a basic helicopter flying document, a couple of them actually, write-ups on the National Tree Flight Society website under the Science Olympiad section. Um, and uh, you'll want to read those too. And also watch the basic video, uh, basic winding and launching video, and that'll give you more information about flying the helicopters. So hopefully this gives you a good starting point and uh, read the other materials and watch the other videos on the National Tree Flight Society website. Thanks.